salutation and all those good things, you lovely degenerates. Uh, it's finally out. Sucker for love, a date to die for. The goat mother is finally back. And honestly, listen to that music. It is awesome. But yeah, I played the demo. The demo was pretty awesome. And I'm ready to come back and hang out with Roxanne. And I'm pretty sure this is gonna like blow up uh, every YouTuber's like YouTube account. Especially since I know Markiplier is definitely gonna play this game. But I wanna play it. Let's get back in. Wait. Chapter get true ending for chapter 999 to unlock. Get true endings for chapter one and two. Survive chapter one. Okay, I like the retroness of this. Original English language with subtitles. Okay. The thousand versus the one. Eldritch gods, cosmic horrors, things beyond our understanding. To merely gaze upon their form is to abandon all hope. Nice animal skills, They are though. sequestered to the stars, appearing only through challenging, failure-prone rituals and unutterable incantations. Their twisted, fanatical followers require no such invitation to commit horrors beyond belief in their stead. It is then when the boogeyman lurking in the shadows is in an obscure, imperceptible shade, but a tangible madman, that the vague prognostications of the stars become empty threats before the undeniably material, with a simple hatchet in their hands. Alright, those were like some $26 words that were being thrown at me, and I probably don't understand what they were by context, but I am into this. Please give me that good sickening crunch. Yes! Did something scary happen? I am still cute as fuck. Huh? Huh? In the book you're reading, did something scary happen? You're as pale as a sheet. I'm A-OK -okay, Sailor Venus. But how are you? Uh, oh. Uh, just a strange dream, is all. I'm alright. Oh. Sorry, this might sound strange, but... Can you tell me where I am? You're in my bookstore, in Sacramento. Are you lost? No, I would technically be in heaven. Can I stay here forever? And you ain't bad to look at either. Oh no. I think I know where I am now. Thanks. I've been having odd dreams lately. Walking around strange places with no memory of how I got there. Start around the same time folks began vanishing from my hometown, Sacramento. Despite the small size of this backwater town, dozens have gone missing this past year. So many that the trains won't even stop here now. Worried locals say they've, start, they've spotted angry spirits prowling the woods, animals with too many features watching. Outsiders can't shake the feeling of being watched by the town's folks on blinking purple eyes. The Sacramento stare, they call it. Or albinism. Um, have you made a selection? Did you find a book to your liking? No, but the monotone... I just realized how monotone the colors are for her. So she definitely is going to be an eldritch god. And of course, like... I'm a sucker for this type. I very much am. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to keep you here late on my account. No, no, it's fine. I'm glad that you enjoyed reading my books, but it's starting to get dark outside. With all the disappearances lately, you'd better hurry home. Very well. Home. 
My family fled this place long ago when the disappearances started, but a letter imploring me to come visit appeared in my apartment earlier this week. Hey, Stardust. Mom's still pretty shaken up about everything, so I'm taking care of her at Gramps' place. If you come by for a visit, I know that'll cheer her right up and help her feel better. We miss you like crazy. Wait, I can actually read a little bit of this. Nice attention to detail. This is definitely my father's handwriting, and only my parents call me Stardust. Impossible. Mom, Dad, I know you're not really waiting for me. You've been gone for over a year, but whoever sent this note obviously wants me to come poking around, and I aim to find out why. There's something strange in Sacramento. The dreams, the stare, the spirits. It's all connected. I'm sure of it. Whatever darkness has settled in our neck of the woods, I'm putting a stop to it. You are not a part of the Scooby-Doo gang. You are supposed to have self-preservation and leave. Why don't people ever understand this? It would be very, very nice if people could understand this. If there's disappearances happening in your hometown and you have a strange letter come back from people that you know are dead, you will not come back out of your hometown. Why, why knowingly go into your own horror movie? Mom, Dad, I love you so much. I'll get to the bottom of this. Thanks for letting me doze off. I promise I'll come back real soon. Thank you for stopping in. Take care. I shall. And I know where to buy glasses that actually do that. The warm glow of the bookstore fades behind me as I step out into the dusk. It growled, I am not safe. Sacramento, this should be my hometown, but it's become unrecognizable. The streets are overrun with dense foliage and missing person posters that litter every surface. They call it, they call this missing person lane. Despite searchers putting up posters here before vanishing themselves. Oh, desperate searchers put up posters here before vanishing themselves. It's the only path left that heads straight to my grand's house, but something feels off. The familiar landmarks of my childhood are nowhere to be found. Have I gotten turned around? No, I've walked in a straight line, yet nothing looks right. I, I'm just gonna point out that that is like one of the worst things about growing up is that especially your hometown doesn't look like your hometown anymore. Of course, things have to improve and shops open and close, but it's almost an uncanny valley about it that, you, that you're that you supposed to know this place like the back of your hand. I mean, I could still find my house easily without really thinking of what street or what turn I need to take, but it's been years and I know things have improved, people have moved, and buildings come and go but it, it hurts in a way it's like a bittersweet pain like deep inside you when you can't really remember your hometown or even places that you used to go in other cities where the rest of your family live it's it hurts and it and I kind of understand why a lot of elderly people feel so nostalgic about the olden times because you know everything is getting more progressive, getting bigger, better, and all of this stuff, and you feel like you're being left behind, that you miss that nostalgia, you miss when things were simpler for you, and it's not anymore, and it just feels like everything's just moving on, yet you can't. So I... Yeah, I, I, I get what what this character is saying about the hometown thing. Stay calm. I pick a direction and jog, searching for anything familiar. Nothing changes. I double back, check walls and addresses. 
still lost. Mm, maybe if I check the note from my parents for the address? Uh, a grocery receipt. I just had their letter. Even kept my pockets empty so I wouldn't lose it. Is this still incorrect? Did they, did they fix this? Hold on, 21, no, 11, 31, 46. nope, it is still not right. This receipt is still not right. And a dollar for ketchup, come on, they're supposed to be at least like, like 25, 30 cents. Soy sauce kind of understand. The beer is one, two, three, fourth down. Yeah, that's about right for the price of beer. Where you been getting four dollar cheeseburgers from? Like, I'll tell you that much. Cheeseburgers ain't four bucks a piece anymore. God, I am old. <laughs> I am. I'm angry that this doesn't add up. But, um, I mean, I guess it's a good thing that it doesn't add up because you only had to pay $51 for that. Oh, God. I can't math right, but even I know this math ain't right. Wait, this receipt has the exact dimensions and folds as the letter. Could I have imagined the whole letter? Honestly, this is this would exactly be what I would say next after seeing this receipt, checking to see if it's right, complaining that it's not right, and then wait. That's supposed to be a letter. No, impossible. I checked the back and then double checked the front, but the receipt remains just that. Something is very wrong. I have to get out. I have to run. I have hey, to. Ow! Are you like blind or something? Watch where you're going, Klotorama. I freaking swear I know your voice from somewhere. I don't know who you are, but I know your voice from somewhere, and I'm pretty sure I wouldn't know it by seeing the name. I would have to see your face. And was she dressed like this in the demo? I slammed right into somebody coming the other way. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you alright? I should have been more careful. Whoa, she's really pretty. But what on earth is this girl doing wandering around Sacramento at night? Don't touch me. Okay, bitch. Sorry, I didn't mean to smack into you like that. I know it's not an excuse, but I was in just a rush. <sighs> oh yeah, I know. You gotta go run off and steal my boyfriend, right? Yeah, it's whatever. Totally cool. Save your breath. I already know how this goes. I have only known you for two minutes and you deserve to have that nose broken. Wait, huh? What? Your boyfriend? Yeah, you heard me. My boyfriend. Buck is mine no I would never go for a dude whose name is Buck okay I I've known people who have had even more corny names I have known a Billy Joe I have known Kevin's I have known Ethan's I have known a guy named Ernie who preferred to go by Bubba. They were some awesome dudes. They were like genuine friends that could definitely like lend you a hand and like good folks. But I don't expect a dude named Buck to achieve anything in life. So I don't give a fuck about your boy Buck. Okay? Yeah. 
hell is Buck? Where are all these accusations coming from? And why ain't I shaking this bitch? I don't know anyone named Buck. Huh? <laughs> really? You don't know who Buck is? If that is your first question, I'm pretty sure your girlfriend named number 83, okay? And this is where you really punch this girl. Face, throat, gut, probably take out a knee. You're not, like, from out of town, are you? The stair. It's real. I turn and I head down and briskly walk past her. She starts walking alongside me. Hey, look at me. No, thank you. I can't let her see my eyes, no matter what. She will notice I don't have the sacramental stare. You can tell me. <laughs> Are you from here or what? Girl, this is post-COVID times. You better keep your ass six feet away or you won't catch two hands. I live here. Oh yeah? Look at me really quick. Seriously, this is when you start getting punchy. This is bad. Even if I make it home, she'll know where I live. What do I do? Look at me. Two punches to your face. That's what you get. And I'm stealing your phone. I freeze. Before I know it, I'm already staring back at her. So you are not from the South. Shit like this, you, you would have gotten like six punches in by the time she did this. I freeze. Before I know it, I'm already staring straight at her. <laughs> Look, you little chuckle fuck. Get out of my face. Bucky, hi. Got another one for you at Missing Person Lane. Yeah, I would take your phone, I would smash it, and I would hurt you. Bucky will find us, but he will find your corpse first. I break into a mad dash, running my hardest. Everything is a blur. My heart pounding in my ears. Can't dull out the sound of whistles, shouts, and unidentifiable com commotion coming from all sides. Panting and dizzy, I feel my body slowing down, but the image of my face on the next missing persons poster kicked my legs into action once more. There, a clearing's up ahead. If I could break their line of sight, I might find a chance to hide. As I near the turnoff, my exhaustion makes itself known. If this is a dead end, or if it's too dark to find my way, I won't have the energy to turn around and start running again. Rounding the corner, I gasp. It's Grandma's house. Thank goodness. I dash up the path and burst through the door. I hold the door shut for what feels like forever as my pulse slows. The pounding footsteps pass by outside. I'm safe for now. Hey, what's... I may just be standing at the entrance, but I can already tell something feels off about my home. Like the warm, familiar place I grew up in is long gone. I can't put my finger on it, but... This dread. Why do I feel like I need to sneak around my own home? Is someone here? Hello? And this is how you die in a horror movie. Sitting there saying hello and... and calling out to, the, to death. No response. Good. Butterfly caught in a web. Strange, I don't see a spider around. Wonder how long the poor thing's been trapped. Oh, that's right. This is the turn thing. Okay, yeah, I know. Why is there a low spot here, though? Hot bath, all of that good stuff. All right. All right. That's right. This is bullshit. And 
realtor. Oh. I own this house. Let me go in. Huh? Our family photos look off. None of them have me in it. And my siblings, their faces seem unfamiliar. And what are those weird symbols doing here? I know this is the symbol for Mercury because I know a little bit about my uh, alchemy. So I gotta turn this way? Nope, this way. One of these days I'm gonna do that and it's, there's gonna be some messed up shit. Looks like the triplets' toys have been mostly untouched ever since we left in a hurry. Triplets. Cripes, what a mess. This place has been turned upside down, but nothing is missing. Weird. Hello. Hey, look, someone dropped purple paint. I know, I know, I gotta go to my room. This hallway, right? And up the stairs. Oh yeah, there's definitely gonna be some evil spirits look at me in that. So we're not going to talk about the goat skull. We're just not going to talk about this goat skull. Honestly, this is why I get for marathon, for marathoning Legends of Advantress. I am very worried of all the goat skulls. So let's go down the hallway. Look at all that cherry syrup. This is not my room. This is definitely not my room. I mean, it ain't my room, but it looks better than the other one. Some creep plastered my little brother's room with smutty posters. Are you sure it was a creep? Whoever did this is getting a fist in their face. Oh, now you want to get fighty didn't get fighty when that bitch was all up in your face but now you want to get fighty because all of a sudden whole little brother's stuff got uh violated i do not understand a pale flower it is beautiful beyond belief all right let's back out of there inside and get this done. My room. What on earth happened here? The occult nonsense? Has someone been living in my house? The candles are still lit. Whoever's responsible was just here, but who? Why? Oh, I don't know. Can we ask the goat that's sitting right here with, uh, I'm pretty sure six legs? isn't mine either. No title, no author, and it reeks of death and decay. With trembling fingers, I open it to a random page. See the black woods. Instructions on how to corrupt the soil of a forest by using remains of a goat and the beating heart of a human. The beating one. I read and reread that passage, but plain as black and white. The beating heart of a human. I reread it again and again and again. My disbelief washing away more and more each time. This 
This is a joke. I am going to die here. I am going to totally die here. First, the stare that only the locals have. Then, the disappearances. Then, the supernaturally overgrown woods. And now this. Uh, the truth that dawns on me. We gotta kill them all. Sacramento has been overrun by cultists. All those missing people, my parents, they haven't been spirited away by an angry forest spirit. They've been abducted. And I'm next. There must be a way to stop this. I flip desperately through the book's pulsing pages, searching for anything that might help. Summon the All Mother. A ritual to force the dark deity behind this madness to physically manifest before me, binding her in a form that can't directly harm me. This is it, my chance to end this nightmare once and for all, to face the sinister goddess behind Sacramento's madness and put a stop to her evil, whatever the cost. For the sake of everyone who suffered and died, I'll have to try. I'll bind this all mother to a physical form and destroy her. It looks like I already have everything I need to try. Summer her, douse any lit candles, ensure there's an idol of a black goat. Have a plant mister and facing the tree. Snuff them. Okay, I need a spray bottle. Spray bottle, spray bottle. Bottle. You found the plant, mister. At certain times in conversation, this icon will appear and you can spray the speaker with water. By right-clicking, this will interrupt whatever they're doing or saying. This feature was primarily included in consideration of players who dislike being hit on by older women slash eldritch abominations, but it has other uses too. I mean, if I can to get ultimate power from seducing an eldritch being might as well live a D&D fantasy all right Mortal, you dare summon me again have your pathetic lives not been extended long enough by my gift have your lusts not been sated? Must you continue to torment your goddess so? Okay, first of all, first of all, this is not scary, as scary as it should be. This is more exciting. But yeah, the teeth would give me pause, but not enough pause. Not enough pause that you would want me to pause. My heart pounds as an immense towering figure materializes before me. My head is splitting open. I can't think, I can barely breathe, with the weight crushing down on me. Do you have any idea who I am? I'm Roxanne, the Black Goat of the Woods, and you will rue this day. So far, I'm in agreement. Madness, given form, shredding my sanity with each second that passes. It's evil, ancient and endless, peering into me of me that were never meant to be seen. And she ain't bad looking either. You tread on dangerous ground, little lamb. Know that each time you summon me, my wrath grows. I will make you rue each second of agony you have inflicted. Now, choose your next words carefully. What more could you possibly want of me? Speak! Her, to sit her back before there's nothing left of me. The words I need won't come. Did I really think I could face a power like this? Stupid, stupid girl. But the last shreds of my will, I cling to the thought of why I came, why I dared this folly. I swallow bile and terror straight in my spine, grab a candle from the floor and speak shakily. I'm here to stop you from hurting another soul. I'm sending you back to the darkness you crawled out of. 
one way or another. Really? Ah, <laughs> uh, the goop sound made it better. Um, yeah? Oh, thank goodness. I thought this nightmare would never end. Excuse me? Uh, aren't you supposed to be, like, trying to stop me or something? No, I'm into this. Get me out of here. I mean, I didn't expect to be the dashing knight to save the princess from the dragon, but the dragon is the princess, so let's go. My brow furrows as I stare at her wordlessly. Isn't she supposed to want to, you know, spread madness and whatnot? You're confused. Damn straight. Well, yeah. You want to be exercised? Vanished. <sighs> yes. I'm rooted to your planet and cannot be removed without a human's aid. I don't understand. You have so many followers. Followers that just tried to kill me, might I add. Can't they free you instead? Things have gotten messy with my cultists. Messy in a bad way, I mean. Yeah, I can see that. My followers have turned against me and are abusing me and my woods' power to kill outsiders indiscriminately. Okay. Have pity on this old, tired goat and banish me so I can't trouble humanity any longer. Please. Alright, we can do this. Help me. I want my temple. This is tricky. On one hand, I came here to banish her. This corrupted force is devouring this town, and who knows how much further it'll spread if nothing is done. On the other hand, I have serious reservations about helping an average god do anything. All of those missing people posters, she's responsible. Uh, she and her cult are pure evil, but for now, we have the same thing. Her gone. And then on the third hand, if I help her, I could end up with ultimate power. But honestly, if this was me in real life, I would not go for the ultimate power. Like, you could give me the wealth, the power, the longevity, all of that. I would just, I would just be like, nah. I'm fine where I am. I don't need to have political power. I wouldn't care to be immortal. I would not like to know the secrets of the universe. I'm fine being a dumbass. You just want me to help you get out of here? Sure, I'll help you get out of here. And let's just go our separate ways. I don't need the accolades. Like... But I think I would be tempted. Most people would. Alright, tell me how to do this. Do I grab any old knife and... Jason you? Your mortal weapons can harm me, child. But they cannot stop me. But that book you carry... It holds the key to my banishment. Perform the rituals in order until you arrive at the uprooting ritual. That one will banish me for good. Alright. First things first. You will need a partner. I am a goddess of lust, so many of your rituals will require you to be in the presence of your ideal mate, your heart's desire. Perform the spawn partner ritual on the next page. Pat, pat, pat. Pat. Alright, goat mother. Okay. Oh, it's Lynette! Nice. Light the ritual candles. The color of the flame does not matter, so please choose one you find comforting. Uh, choose, have your choice of aromantic herb on your person. Imagine your ideal partner. If it exists, it will appear before you in a cloud of smoke. If it doesn't exist, it will be created. Do not imagine something you can't put back. Rosemary, lavender, mint. Lavender. I like the blues, baby. Imagine. Oh 
and then the music turns into something that will give you a result in nine months or the situation is for me. Wait, I can't explain. Go ahead. I can't explain. I got nothing. What is wrong with my taste? <laughs> There's no need to be bashful, especially after all that time you spent playing coy. That's what I was doing. Not being desperate to save my life and my town, and the only thought I could have is of the one creature that is in this room that is not trying to kill me. But sure, let's stroke your ego. In view of the circumstances, perhaps I will allow you to be my partner. Alright then. Really? And that's okay with you? Even though we just met? Well, it's sudden, and it'll be a long, long time before I could ever trust a human again. But I'm not exactly the god of taking things slow. I'm in danger. In the, good, in the best type of danger, but I'm in danger. Besides, I already have a thousand children. <laughs> There's no harm in a thousand and one. I'm in big danger. What, what are we talking about? Taking me as your partner? I thought you were talking about just being my girlfriend. You thought... You thought the two definitions of partners that a fertility goddess was referring to the platonic meaning? I mean... Look at you. Look at me. You could do so much better. There's three me. Partners. What's the third? Cowboy. Oh, cowboys. Why are you still joking around while standing so close to me? You should be melting with desire. Being anywhere within a mile of me should amplify your lust a thousandfold. Well, I'm a rarity. Oh, that's an easy one. A thousand times zero is zero. Wait, are you saying what I think you're saying? Yep. So, I take it you haven't had children yet? Nope. Uh, the answer is still the same, just like from the demo. I can't, I can't miss what I never had. Nope. And you, you aren't with child now? No. You're going to die here, and there's nothing I can do to help. What? I thought we were trying to get you out of here. You're just not going to help me because I don't have kids? It's not that I won't. It's that I can't. I am an entity of untapped cosmic potential. And I want a big family. The biggest family possible. I want every living thing on Earth to be a direct descendant of me or one of my followers. Ah, uh, the All-Mother. Those that best serve that goal receive a fraction of my power. My most devoted followers are bestowed with gifts like extended lifespans, rapid healing, physical enhancement, and in some cases, immortality. And those followers are the ones looking for you. And yet, they can't keep their heads out of their asses long enough to know when to put you back home. You, on the other hand, have closed yourself off to my dark influence and are mortal and vulnerable. No kids, no powers. I'm somebody's child. Does that count? What if I don't want powers or kids? What if I drained the life from your body and then used it to fertilize my wicked soil until something that will give me grandchildren comes crawling out? Why? Is this my mother? I take an involuntary step backwards. Uh, I'm sorry. You didn't deserve that. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm good. Just, just, I just got it loud and clear. Let's, let's finish the kids' topic. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Powers or not, let's move on to the next ritual so we can get you out of here, okay? Mm. Holy. 
freaking scary. She's really taking this hard. I better go get the stuff for the next one. Right. The Epicurean Beast. Following. Meat from the living thing that died within the black woods. Check the meat rack in the dining room. Milk of the black goat. Store-bought 2% is apparently fine. It's in the fridge. Lastly, a receptacle filled with the brim of liquid life. Blood. They meant blood. Please use blood from now on. Sorry. And chant while facing the fire, red fire candle. So, so I can at least get that done first. Be good. Pat, pat, pat. I'm going to get groceries. tie-dye room down this hallway and down this hallway nothing creepy in the thing yet a tatami room hello hey look at that much 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 more spilled paint hmm that's odd I could have sworn we only had the one futon downstairs. Where all these extra beds come from and why they are all laid out like this. So turn this way. Salutations. A lot of food stuff, so at least my house is being taken care of. Oh, look, meat. I tear a chunk of meat from this hook. This should be what I'm looking for. It smells kind of strange. Is it beef? Pork? Oh, whatever it came from, it's huge. I should move on before I count the number of legs hanging off the hooks. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they killed the goat. They killed the woman's goat. If one of these things start moving, I may scream. A receptacle filled to the blend, brim with liquid life. Blood. An unsettling amount of it. Is this is what the ritual calls for? Okay. I gotta go this way. Kitchen. Hi! Herbs and spices. I usually punch with spices. Pepper, nutmeg, ginger, and cinnamon to name the couple of seeds that I see. The air is almost suffocatingly thick with their scent. It looks like cooking oil, except it's in a gallon container and it smells like burnt hair and sulfur. The color is black as soot too. Oh, that has been used way too many times. It's time to get a new set of cooking oil. Fridge. This is milk of the black goat. It just looks like regular cart of store-bought strawberry milk with a label slapped on it. I guess the cultists would have a hard time getting the real thing from Roxanne. <laughs> now that their relationship has soured, uh, no pun intended, this should be good enough. A chill went up my spine. Am I being watched? I got everything. I'm getting the fuck out. All right. I know where I gotta go. Hey, folks. Just passing by. And I believe this is the one where I turn this way. So Thomas. Salutations. Let's get let's get moving. I am going to get choke scared so goddamn hard in this game. I know I am. I'm not prepared for it, but I know I am. 
So let's go down this hallway to my room. Roxy, I'm back. Now we can make you a feast. Ah, <sighs> well done. Looks like you did everything perfectly. Impressive. Nothing to it. If all the rituals are this easy, I'll help you out of here in no time. <laughs> Perhaps so. Now eat your steak and wine, honey. I, um... I don't want to leave things as they are between us. Your life is your own. I'm sorry for losing my composure. I understand why this is a tough situation to deal with. You have nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, so that, I nearly forgot about that already. I'm a little surprised that a little god would be apologizing to a human at all. I've given it some thought. And while you may be blasphemously abstinent, you're the only person in the world that can help me. I mean, ain't nothing to it. You see, if you step within range of my woods, any desire you have that will lead you closer to me is amplified to such an intense degree that it's unbearable. And most of the time, it's lust. Well, lust can be manifested in different ways. Lust is desire of the highest caliber. It can be a desire to help your friends. It can be a desire to be intimate with someone. It can be a desire to reconnect with family. So technically this character is dealing with an intense feeling of lust, but it's lust to a home that has no longer been her home. She wanted to see her family. She wanted answers. And the lust to get those answers is what drew her here. So it isn't that she is immune. She is feeling the desire of lust, but not in the more sinful way of it. But lust is lust, no matter how you see it. Anyone who is led here seeking carnal or animalistic pleasures develops the Sacramento stare and becomes a cultist. No, it was just reconnection if you are brought into my woods for any other reason you don't become one of my chosen thousand and your desire will make you futilely search the woods for what isn't there but it's still technically a lust you'll forget to eat and sleep and you'll search and search until you die of exhaustion and become fertilizer for the woods to grow further You're the only person to reach me without joining the cult, or dropping dead. Thanks in no small part to the fact that you don't have lust to amplify. I'm still thinking that's just a well roundabout way of saying all of this, but still, we impress Goat Mother. My only question is, if you're not here for lust, why are you here? Because I wanted to find my family. I pull out the receipt from my pocket. I came here looking for my parents. They vanished somewhere around here a year ago. This used to be a letter from them saying that they were here in the house. But once they got here, it turned into a blank receipt and won't turn back. The woods have indeed toyed with your emotions to bring you here. That paper was likely never a letter from your parents, but the woods made you believe it was. I'm sorry. just still gone. They were likely consumed by my woods no more than three days after they disappeared. I feel like I've been punched in the gut. The dust has long settled on my parents being gone, but the grief never faded. Eat. It'll give you your strength back. The woods won't let you feel how tired you are. I don't feel tired at all, but come to think of it, I felt like I was going to collapse when I made it to the house. I don't think I've eaten since I got in the letter either. I take a few bites, and the tears abate. There, there. 
It'll be all right, Stardust. Stardust? How did you know my parents' nickname for me? Anything that dies within my black woods becomes a part of it. A part of me. Their memories of you likely live on in me. That is very bittersweet. I guess that settles it. My parents really are gone. And the only way she would know that name. This isn't the kind of closure I was hoping I'd find here. But I came to put it into the disappearances, and that's what I'll do. Um... I hope this isn't an offensive question, but all the missing people and all the people that came looking for them, you, you killed them all. I mean, like, there's no jury on Earth that'll be able to convict you and no life sentence that will continue to carry out for you. I just want self-clarification. I already got the closure on my parents, but I just need full clarification on how bad I'm gonna burn your woods. It was never supposed to be like this. I came bearing gifts of safe childbirth for infant and mother, hungerlessness, disease immunity. But instead, my own worshippers tormented me until it broke my hearts. Now my woods are bloodthirsty, and I'm forced to watch innumerable die. Hearts. Are, are these all the hearts? But why? How can someone do something like that? How can someone have so much hate in their hearts? Because it's had an eternity to accumulate. Fair enough. What was that? It sounded like something breaking downstairs. Are they coming? Already? No, 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 no! Oh, something got moved and I am about to take that sheet back there and throw it at somebody. I forgot, Roxanne is just as scared as I am. I need to be more careful with showing fear for her sake. It could just be the house. The place is old and rotten in some places, so sometimes the house shifts on its own. I take a quick look around my thing. Uh, I take a quick look around my room for the sturdiest thing I can find. They left my bass guitar untouched. I'll check it out. It sounds like it came from the kitchen. Alright, I was going to leave it here, but I have to now. Pat, pat, pat. I will back. Greetings and fucking salutations! Let's get it on! Damn it. Nobody's here. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. It could have been the house settling, like I said. Uh-uh. I won't. Ah! Ooh! Ooh! I fucking swung! Ah, oh, it's that bitch! I gotta hit her again! I think I, that hit knocked them out cold. That made so much noise, I can't afford to stick around, but I don't feel good letting this maniac wake up and ambush me. I tied them up somewhere to keep an eye on them. Why is the knife covered in blood? I can't for the life of me find a wound anywhere on my body. I certainly don't feel pain either. Grab a hold of the scruff of cultist collar and drag them a short distance. I feel unusually... They feel unusually light to carry, but my left arm can't produce any force, so I got stabbed. What's going on with... Okay. What was 
lost that, uh, that vision. No matter how much I focus, I can't bring it back. Just like the fake letter I received. If it was concealing my injuries from me, so I can't tell when I'm about to drop dead. I sling my base over my shoulder by a strap and drag the cultist with my right arm alone. I'm sure this would be torture if I could feel pain or exhaustion. out though I I do not have a camera on me but y'all I jumped that bitch got what was coming to her damn it I cannot swing purple splatter room alright Roxanne you ain't gonna believe the bullshit that I just dealt with. Oh, right, one more down. Right here. Woman, you won't believe this shit. I'm back. Welcome back. What is that? Bass guitar. Not that. The dead body. It's dead. Oh, they're alive, actually. You took one of the thousand alive? And then brought them here? This is... very good, actually. Now you have a blood sacrifice if you need one. What did you say? I, I'm glad I was being praised, but what did you say? Some of these rituals require blood or human... participants. Having someone knocked out and served to you on a silver platter makes things much easier. Okay. I didn't drag them upstairs so they could be a sacrifice. I tied their wrists together behind a low bearing post in my room. Now, I'm an outer god, so my moral code is completely different from that of humans. But didn't they just try to kill you? That is true. And I am 100% on board with you for taking this bitch out. Because she kind of spearheaded everything that happened. But, uh, this character has a better more moral code than me. Maybe, but under that mask, this could be someone else who went missing. I could never put someone through what I felt when my parents didn't come back. The mask is snug against the cultist's face, but with a firm yank. Yep, I'm killing you. Her? Nanny! Nanny? Uh, Hit her again. Uh, Hit her again. You! Oh, you're that klutz from Missing Person Lane. Whoop your ass. <laughs> you worthless lamb. We'll kill you. Shut up. Just shut up. We ain't even starting this shit. You're in my house. You and your cultist assholes took over my house brought Roxanne into this world. You caused that fucking forest. You caused my parents to die. You are going to get it. You're just going to be the first. I'll make sure Roxanne gets out, but oh, you guys are going to pay. Sheesh, maybe I bonked you on the head a little too hard. It's not that. She has the stare. Her lust for the leader of the Thousand, Buck, has been amplified a thousandfold into blind fanaticism. So we kill Buck. <sighs> Alright, I'm getting something to cover your mouth. Hey, don't try to wiggle out of that. I don't want to have to hurt you. I just need to make sure that you can't attack me again. You think you can steal my book, bash me over the head with a guitar, tie me up, and get away with it? Oh, you're so dead. I am going to have a field day with you. <laughs> what did you expect to thank you? <sighs> She's long gone. Copper again. 
It's pointless trying to talk to her. If you're insisting on keeping her alive, just do us both a favor and keep an eye on her. If you have to look away, don't turn your back on her for too long. I do insist on keeping her alive. If she has the stare, then she didn't choose this. She was just another innocent person who got tricked into coming here. Hey, if you stay put for now, then I can just let you go after I'm done here, okay? Drop dead. You will. I saw I returned her mask to her. First things first, I need to do something about my mom. To kill energy, place a ghost skull over your face, light a green fire, and draw the symbol. If the intended target is the caster, this and isn't deceased, draw this symbol. You better stay still. I would probably have to go to the bathroom, right? Alright. Really? Trying to... Oh. I still can't tell whether if I'm in pain or not. I can only hope I'm still not bleeding out. That about handles my injuries. Hey, um... What? Your name is Nani, right? I'm gonna give you your mask back so that you can do the ritual too. That that lump ate some. What? The one you gave to me? I didn't mean to hurt you, I swear. You came at me. I was just defending myself. Look, you're hurt. Let me help patch you up and we'll call it even. Deal? Like, barf me out. This is so 90s, it's actually hurting. Here, now chant, bottom of the page. I know how to do it. A horn the golf tog, like, you got more grins bada. Better? This is gonna come back to bite you. Just wait until I break free, then you're toast for real. We're throwing rocks. Um. Yeah, what a gris gruesome looking ritual. What's wrong? Nothing, just getting the creepy crawlies from this one. It looks like I gotta eat a bunch of stuff in order to make the seed made immortal by my influence. When you die, the seed will bloom, leaving something good in the world long after you've passed away. That's kind of beautiful, actually. Really? You think so? Yes. I do. Why, I don't like thinking about dying. It's kind of comforting thinking a part of me will live on, you know? Well, the same could be said about having children. They carry on your legacy long after you die, too. And if you have a bunch of children, it's like living forever. Stop. <laughs> kidding, kidding. I was only 60% serious. Uh-huh. That's still more than half serious. But then again, living forever is something best done through offspring. Experiencing it yourself. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. You mean like what you did to my Bucky? 
What? He brought that upon himself. You cursed him. He was your most devout follower, and you cursed him. Wait, cursed? <sighs> One of my followers, the leader of the Thousand, stole a kiss from me long ago and became immortal. No matter what happens, he will still exist. Forever. Ooh, I have an idea on how to stop him. It'd be hilarious. How is that a curse? I can use immortality right about now. Wouldn't it be like nice to live forever? I will tell you right now. No, the hell you don't. Do you not understand how messed up it is to outlive your friends and family? Even if it wasn't like for media showing about that, that would be hell because you would start becoming more and more of a religion of a recluse because forging relationships that you know that will not even last the next hundred years it's going to be hurtful it's going to be painful if you had kids you would see them live and die time and time again you would be able to live long enough to see the world make the same goddamn mistakes time and time again but never learn from them and again like with immortality if they didn't say that you have eternal youth or eternal beauty or even eternal health so think if you ended up being terminal for something you would have nothing to help you throughout all that time you would survive in agony like immortality is a nice thought but in practice no hell no no thank you um i mean Immortality is certainly not living forever. The pain you feel after fatal wounds becomes permanent, lifelong agony. Thank you. For instance, if a human drowns, they feel indescribable fear and pain for seconds, maybe minutes at worst, and then are swept away by the mercy of death. An immortal human would continue to drown, thrashing and screaming soundlessly, until hope came, if it came. That is now a new And after a certain death, your body will just go to the bottom anyway. So you'd be stuck in an endless darkness with deep sea creatures eating your flesh while all you're doing is doing this soundless scream. And you'd be lucky if even like a deep sea uh, explorer would find you. Oh, that is hell, but now that's a good idea to put Buck in. So, for a mortal human to be cursed with cosmic permanence, Immortality is terror beyond death. Buck realized this, and is tormenting me until I take it back. How come you don't just take it back? Wouldn't they let you go if you did? If cosmic permanence was something that could be undone, it wouldn't be permanent, would it? Nice. <laughs> when Bucky finds you, when he gets his hands on you... Buck is already here. Oh, fuck no. A voice coming from the other side of my bedroom door. I didn't even hear him come. Give me my thing. Bucky! Fuck, fuck. Give me the base. Fuck! They're here! Hello in there. I hate this. It would appear that you have my book, my nanny, and my god inside that room with you. Uh-huh. The good news is, you're holding all of the cards, as long as Nanny is unharmed. She's fine, I just tied her up. Is that so? Then it looks like we can make a deal. If you let us in, we'll take Nanny and go. And if I don't? Yeah, no way. Once that door is open, I'm going missing for sure. <laughs> realize the situation you're in we can storm in and take the book the girl and the god by force i believe it then how come you haven't done it already bitch you might get a lucky shot on one of us before you die like i assume you did nanny and if the injury was serious we'd be stuck for the next who knows how many years with it all of that is too much risk over you Nobody here has any... Okay. Right, so you'll just 
let me waltz on out of here? We get dozens of people trapped in our woods every week. It means nothing to us if you escape. Even if I go straight to the police and tell them everything. <laughs> the police are already here. Fuck. Open the door, and you can keep Roxanne and the book. And if you don't, you know what will happen. You have 20 seconds to make your choice. I don't have any... Damn it. Take the mask, the hallway. Damn it! Fine. trying to find a spot to end it. I think you gave me a countdown. Ah, that sucked. But you know what? That was fun. So, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. There's definitely going to be a part two to this. I that was just too good. And hopefully you, I'll basically see you tomorrow.